First, let's just start since we're at the World Bank and these are the annual meetings. What has been your message here? What are you here to push? What is your agenda during the annual meetings? Uh, well, I'm definitely here to push my feminist agenda yep. because, uh, as you know, we just launched a new feminist international assistance policy last June. That's right, and I'm not sure if all our people watching this know when you call it a feminist agenda, that's in the title of the entire international development policy of your government. Absolutely, yes. After uh, a year, uh, almost a year and a half of con uh, consultations, uh, 15,000 per uh, person participated to the consultation in 65 countries, we came to the conclusion that if we really want to make a difference, if we really want to end poverty, we have to empower women. This is, uh, this is a must, and this is why, this is why uh, de we decided to put women and girls at the heart of this new policy and to make everything, uh, no matter what areas of expertise or what project we are talking about, it could be energy, agriculture, governance, uh, even peace and security and humanitarian assistance, all our projects, uh, all our partners must uh, make sure that they uh, involve women. I mean, that they consult local women mm. in the beginning, that the women are part of the decision making, and obviously during the implementation of any project, that they are empowered. Let's dig into that a bit because that's a fascinating thing. You know, lots of countries have foreign aid programs and say women and girls matter, they're important. You're one of the few, maybe the only, that's put it in the headline and then has these very strict kinds of restrictions on the way you spend the money. So let's just talk about that. If, if there's an infrastructure project, and you say there has to be a gender lens on that project. What are the sort of things that CETA will do differently now? Um, I know it's not CETA, but that the <laughs> Canadian Development Agency will do different now. <laughs> yes. Um, well, we don't do much infrastructure, to be honest. And uh, when I was talking about that, the examples that were given to me was either humanitarian assistance or, for, for example, vaccination. Okay. Okay? Of course, we will vaccinate boys and girls. But the way we do it, so once again, if we take the time to consult women locally, we will have a better understanding of what's going on and how we can provide these services of vaccination in a better way. Uh, those women who will participate, who will be trained as health workers, mm -hmm. can be trained for other things, family planning for example. Mm -hmm. They will be empowered financially because they will get a salary, but also because they will go out of their home. They will uh, meet with other women in other communities. So this is also ways to empower women and to push forward uh, this feminist policy, including sexual and reproductive health and rights. rights. We will also gather disaggreg gender disaggregated data through the process. So this is why um, ev each and every, actually in the policy it's written 95% of our project will have um, a significant women empowerment component but in my mind, it's 100%. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for the project who will not be able to, to reach at least the first level of engagement, uh, engaging women. It really is pioneering for a couple of reasons. One, you mentioned disaggregated data by gender, <laughs> which is really uncommon. Um, something that was a surprise to me when Melinda Gates first started talking about their big approach to this and looking at how much development data is not at all disaggregated. So you don't mm -hmm. know to what extent you're actually reaching women and girls. Um, I know another part of that policy is that you're going to start spending more of the budget directly on projects that, that target women and girls Absolutely. as beneficiaries. Can you talk about that and how that's going so far? The policy was just announced a few months ago, but how, how is it changing the way Canada works right now? Uh, the previous year, we committed, uh, I, I asked for some baselines, as we say, mm -hmm. and we noticed that only between 2 and 3 percent of our budget, development budget, was dedicated to project targeting women making a, a real difference, I mean, mm -hmm. in the lives of women. And I want to bring it from 2 to 3 percent to 15 percent. So it's really a, a big focus. And we recently launched the Voice and Leadership Initiative. Mm -hmm. So this is $150 million over five years for local women's organization in more or less 30 countries. So the idea is really to work with the grassroots organizations. These women know their priorities, their needs, and the best way to uh, advance uh, women's rights. So it could be, in the f depending on the countries and the region, it could be uh, working for uh, sexual and reproductive rights, but it could be also access to justice. It could be access uh, to, uh, to have a, prop a property, own a business, um, female genital mutilation. Mm -hmm. 
uh, early and child marriage. So all of these women's rights that we want to push forward are very important and we want to support these local organizations to build their capacity to, uh, to advocate and to you know, contribute to the change in some cultural norms. Now, like every major donor country, you've got in Canada a real ecosystem of nonprofits, of consulting companies, of NGOs of all kinds, right? How have they responded to this call, to this policy shift? Very well. <laughs> Actually, um, I think they felt uh, listened to because, uh, as I said, we've been through a very important mm -hmm. consultation. And it really was obvious to me that we had to empower women if we wanted to make a difference. So all, all these partners were asking me to put women and girls at the heart of the policy. And it was even more interesting. A few months ago, I was in Jordan or Iraq. And one of our partner in humanitarian in a humanitarian context said, uh, "Thank you for obliging us to, you know, to have this women component." And I said, "Come on, guys, you're the one who told me to do that." <laughs> <laughs> but we all know. But right. you, we have to walk the talk. And even today, I I, I heard we have to run the talk. <laughs> yeah, there is urgency. And in fact, one of the things that I'm sure you're talking about at these meetings are the the humanitarian crises all over mm. the world. How does that affect the way you look at this policy and even your overall budget? I know there was talk that your budget went down a bit, although the, the explanation was it was about the fiscal year and the calendar year differences. Are you looking to increase the foreign aid budget out of Canada next year, given all the humanitarian crises and the fact that you also have a, a development agenda you're trying to fund at the same time? Uh, I don't have any announcement to make today on, on this subject, but uh, it's, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, it's uh, to, to find the right balance between humanitarian uh, assistance, emergency needs, uh, because of all these conflicts, all these natural disasters, but also still be working with developing countries and also supporting middle-income countries who are on the path of democracy but still have pockets of poverty. So it's still a challenge to figure out uh, how we can best uh, use our money. But my the, the, the other thing that uh, we are working a lot uh, on, and actually this is one reason for being here at the World Bank this week, is to think about innovative financing. How can we use uh, Canada's uh, brand, actually it has a value right now, okay. and uh, Canada's brand and Canada's financial contribution to bring new partners around the table, to bring new investors. Uh, it could be countries who are not, you know, usual donors, mm -hmm. uh, but also private sectors, philanthropists, but investors as well. Uh, so we are really looking at that how what are the best initiatives or the best financing mechanisms that we could use to push forward our feminist policy and bring new money? Because we all know that if we rely only on ODA, Official Development mm -hmm. Assistance, it will never be enough to sure. reach the Sustainable de Development Objectives. So we definitely have to find new friends.